In this video, I'm going to have a look at the installation and use of Chrome OS Flex on a Dell XPS 139365, which has a two-in-one touchscreen device. So in order to create installation media for Chrome OS Flex, you actually need to have Google Chrome installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and install that. Once Google Chrome is installed, you need to have a look for Chrome extensions. And then search for Chrome Recovery Utility. And then select Add to Chrome. And then select Add Extension. So once the extension has been added, select Extensions and then Chromebook Recovery Utility. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a bootable USB. So insert your USB flash drive. Then under Manufacturer, select Google Chrome OS Flex and then Chrome OS Flex. Now this is a bit confusing because they have a list of models so the models are only systems that have been sold as Chromebooks. There's actually a certified model list for Chrome OS Flex here. And my Dell XPS 139365 is certified here, but it's not listed as an individual model. So after that, select your USB flash drive and then select continue and then accept the user account control prompt. And it should format your USB flash drive to create a bootable USB. Now, personally, I would rather if they just provided an ISO, so you could use a utility like Rufus to make the bootable USB. So once it's finished, it will say your recovery media is ready and you can select done. So if I go to disk management, you can see how it's partitioned the USB flash drive. So it's a very small partition and most of it's unallocated. So now I'm going to power off this computer and insert the USB flash drive into my Dell XPS 13 9365 and I'm going to power it up and I'm going to press F2 to enter the Dell UFI BIOS setup. So you can see my system information that it's uh, XPS 13 9365 and if I go to boot sequence I want to make sure that all the old boot entries are removed and I've only got the USB flash drive display. Under system configuration, I want to select SATA operation and make sure it's AHCI. So I tried to install it using RAID and essentially during the installation it doesn't let you select your drive. So it actually installed it on the USB flash drive as presumably it didn't recognize the internal solid state drive. So next, I'm just checking all the performance settings are enabled. And I'll also want to check that the virtualization technologies are enabled, as these will be required to configure Linux when it comes to installing applications. So finally, I'm going to go to the maintenance and select the data wipe and select OK and select no at the negatively phrased question. And now I'm going to exit the UFI by setup and save the changes. So I'll just select continue and then erase. And this will perform the internal wipe of the NVMe solid state drive. And then I'll select okay. Okay, so now I'm going to press F12 to enter the Dell UFI BIOS boot menu. And here I should see that secure boot is enabled. And the 
Chrome OS Flex, bootable USB flash drive displays. Okay, so it's selected English United States by default. I want to change this to English United Kingdom and select OK and then get started and then select install Chrome OS Flex and then install. So it will go ahead and proceed with the install. And then it's going to prompt you to remove the USB flash drive and select restart. So next it's going to reboot and unfortunately it selects English United States again. So you're going to need to change this back to your, your language setting. So I'm going to change this back to English United Kingdom and select a UK keyboard. Select get started again and then select your wireless network and go ahead and input your wireless network password and connect to it. Select you and then select next and then input your Gmail and input your Gmail password. So this will log you in, um, select accept and continue, accept and continue, accept and conti continue. And then you can optionally agree to the Google Assistant. You'll have the option to select the light or the dark theme. I'm going to select the light theme. And now Google Chrome OS Flex is installed. So it's got files and the only folder within files is downloads by default. However, it's pretty easy to create a documents folder. And it's also got Google Chrome as expected. And this works in the same manner as it does in other platforms. Most of the applications are browser based. So you've got Google Docs, which is a word processor. You've got Google Sheets, which is a spreadsheet. And as you see, these just essentially open up in, in a browser tab. The settings are, are quite basic. They're, it's very similar to the settings on, a, on an Android phone or the settings of the Google Chrome browser. And for the storage settings, if I go back to files, you can see how, how much space you've got left on the, the, the internal drive. So you've got the web store, which is quite limited. Most of the applications are simple browser based ones. So they basically install a shortcut to the start screen, which opens the application up within the browser. So I'm going to plug in my XPS 13 9365 into a WD 19 Thunderbolt dock. And in this dock, I've got a external monitor. So the XPS 13 has a high DPI screen and the monitor is just a regular DPI screen. And you can see that the display on both screens is as expected and I can drag and drop one application from one screen to the next. Now there are some shortcut keys to um, snap and to minimize. So Alt and plus and Alt and minus will snap it across the screen and Alt and minus will minimize it. Unfortunately, this doesn't work well in a multi-monitor configuration. So you see essentially when I'm dragging the window with the mouse or using the shortcut keys that I'm actually only able to snap to the far right of the right monitor and the far left of the left monitor. I can't snap to the middle sections, i.e. the right of the left monitor and the left of the right monitor. So that's the um, 
pre-installed applications that are native to the operating system. I've actually installed VS Code within Linux and this works, works okay across both monitors. However, some of the other Linux applications such as only Office desktop editors doesn't actually display that well on the system. So this is probably more of a problem with the application itself. And a lot of these Linux applications struggle if you're using a system with a high DPI screen. In saying that, I'm pretty sure natively within Linux, it, it displayed better than, than it is displaying here. One thing I'm also noticing is that um, only Office desktop editors is pretty slow, so it takes a long time to open. And actually, you can see it loading, and I've sped the loading part up four times, so that's just a, a gauge of how slow um, the only Office desktop editors are. I'm going to also check LibreOffice, which is also installed within Linux. And once again, the display for this application isn't perfect. And this is probably because the XPS 13 9365 has this high DPI screen. Some of the Linux applications such as VS Code and GIMP display much better on, on both screens. So they've probably got more optimizations for a high DPI screen than um, these Office applications do. So there does seem to be a sleep issue when you have the system docked and you allow it to go to sleep. Um, you essentially can't wake it up again and have to force power it down and then, then force power it back up. So I had to change the power setting so it wouldn't sleep. Okay, let's have a look at the touchscreen now. So the touchscreen works pretty seamlessly. So as you expect, Google Chrome works pretty nicely on the touchscreen. Now when the system's in laptop mode, there's no way of getting the touchscreen keyboard. This will show up when I convert it to tablet mode. Files also work well with the touchscreen. So essentially all the inbuilt applications are touchscreen friendly. And the touchscreen response is pretty nice. VS Code is also working nicely with the touchscreen here. I'm going to convert it into a tablet now. So one thing I notice on Linux applications such as VS Code is if I click into them, I don't get the touchscreen keyboard. If I do the same on Google Chrome, then I get this pretty nice touchscreen keyboard. So the touchscreen keyboard has, has all these emojis. However, it lacks the symbols that the touchscreen keyboard on Windows 10 and 11 has. such as the mathematical symbols and, and Greek letters and so on, which as a physicist, I actually use quite, quite a lot. So the touchscreen keyboard also works well on the, the Linux terminal, which is, is a, a native application. It doesn't work well on Linux apps, such as the text editor that's been installed. However, the pre-installed text editor will invoke the touchscreen keyboard. So when you attempt to press into a Linux application, um, and expect the touchscreen keyboard, you actually get a notification telling you that the touchscreen keyboard is not supported for Linux apps yet. So it seems like they're working on this and hopefully 
hopefully it'll work soon. So my device is an auto rotating. So it should rotate using a rotation sensor when I do this. Sometimes I need to open it up again. And then this just re-enables the auto rotation sensor. So this is now working as expected. And the display of native applications and the touchscreen matrix work as expected, whether on portrait or landscape mode. And once again, this is an issue that a lot of Linux distributions struggle with. So it's quite refreshing that the operating system is taking full advantage of this two-in-one touchscreen device. So I'm going to open up the terminal and notice it says Linux and then setup. I need to turn on this Linux development environment. Then I need to create a Linux username. I'm just going to abbreviate this to Philip. And I'm going to select a custom size of 120 gigabytes because I've got a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. So what this is going to do is actually install a Debian based Linux virtual machine, which you can use to install applications on. So once it's installed, you should be able to see the Linux terminal. I'm just going to go and change some of the settings so you can actually view the terminal because it is quite small on the on the YouTube video. Within files, you've got this Linux files subfolder. So as the name suggests, this is used for accessing files within Linux and you can drag and drop files from the, the operating system to Linux in order to access them. So now that I've increased the font size, let's have a look at LS. So nothing displays because there's no files in Linux files. Let's have a look at attempting to install some Linux applications. So I'm going to download the only office desktop editors and uh, the mobile apps are selected by default. When I select install, it takes me to Google Play and for some reason it doesn't work even though this is a Chrome OS flex. I need to select the desktop apps and download the Debian file. So I can actually just install a Debian file by um, going to the file, right-clicking it and select Install with Linux. And the installation is actually quite straightforward. It essentially does it in the background. And then you get this Linux apps folder and you can just launch the application from it in theory. After I installed the OnlyOffice desktop editors, I was unable to launch them, however. So I don't know if this is a dependency or if, if I needed to restart the computer. So I'll come back to these later, but as you see on the first attempt, they, they didn't launch. Okay, so let me have a look at installing Python now. So I'm going to install Mamba Forge. And I'm going to download um, linux.sh file. So what I need to do is copy this across to Linux files or just move it across to Linux files. So if I type in ls now, I see this file listed. I'm actually going to create some folders. So I'll just create a folder called documents and a folder called downloads. Now, unfortunately the shortcut key, control shift and N opens a new in incognito tab. And the shortcut key to create a new folder is control and E. So this is inconsistent with both Linux and Windows, which is quite annoying. 
because I'm quite used to this shortcut key. So I'm going to create a downloads and a documents folder and now I'm going to type in ls. And now I'm going to change the directory to downloads and type in ls and I get this .sh file. So I'm going to copy the file name including the file extension and type in bash and then select a script file. I'm going to go ahead with the install and I've made another installation video on MambaForge which covers this in a lot more detail. So I'm actually going to speed up this recording significantly and I'm going to just test to see whether the um, Python IDEs work. So since Mamba is installed, the base Python environment is selected and I'm going to update it. So now let's attempt to use Python by typing in Python 3 and printing hello world. So this works as expected. Okay, so I can open up the um, text application that's pre-installed and I can create a Python file. So by default, the file is a text file. However, when I save it in the Linux files and then the documents with a .py extension, notice that the syntax highlighting changes. So it's got some Python syntax highlighting. Okay, so if I change the directory to documents, I type in ls, I see the file, I can go ahead and launch this using Python 3 and it works as expected. Okay, so I'm going to just have a look at installing the other Python IDEs. And basically I'm going to follow the Linux instructions that I put together on GitHub. Okay, so you can go ahead and launch IDO by typing in IDO3. And I'm just going to configure this so it's got a higher font size. So you can, can see it. So there's only a limited number of fonts pre-installed with the Debian virtual machine. So we can go ahead and open the script file up and we can go ahead and run it. So let me just snap the console to the left and script file to the right and select run module. And we can see the syntax highlighting works as expected. Okay, so that's idle, which is a very simple application. Let's have a look at installing Sp Spider. So I'm going to whiz by the installation of Spider here. And as I mentioned, I cover the installation of MambaForge in a lot more detail in another video. So unfortunately, after installation of Spider, um, it was unable to launch. So I'm going to go ahead and try JupyterLab. And I expect more success with JupyterLab because it's a browser-based IDE, which essentially is going to work with um, Google Chrome. Okay, so Google Chrome opens JupyterLab up as expected. And I can open this script file up, create a new console for it and go ahead and select run and then, then run all, run all code. And this works as expected. And I can create an um, interactive Python notebook So once again, I'm just going to whiz through this code. Just This is just a quick test to see whether the Chrome OS Flex is working as expected with these applications. And it seems to be working fine. So I need to press Control and C to close the JupyterLab server. And now I'm going to create 
a new environment for Visual Studio Code. Okay, to install Visual Studio Code itself, I'm going to need to download the dev file. So I'm going to go to the Visual Studio Code website and select download and select the deb. Once again, I can just right click the deb file and select install with Linux. And it'll go ahead and install Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code now is installed. So it's going to display in the Linux apps folder. And this time when I, I click this application, it launches without any issue. So I'm going to change the syntax highlighting theme to light. And then I'm going to install the Python extension. And I'm going to install the Markdown extension. Okay, so now I'm going to open a new folder and just select the documents folder within Linux files. And uh, for some reason, it's prompting me to save this setting. So I'm just going to select don't save and retry opening this folder. So it's got the Python script file and it's also got the interactive notebook file. So if I open the interactive notebook file, and attempt to run it. Actually, I have some issues here because it's selected the Python environment that's pre-installed with Linux. So I need to press Control, Shift and P to change the interpreter. So let me just cancel this and close the file and reopen it. So this is because I opened Visual Studio Code up using then the shortcut on the start menu instead of launching it through the terminal when the Visual Studio Code Python environment was selected. So now the correct Python environment is selected, then the code runs as expected in Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code seems to work as expected. Let's have a look at installing some of our applications using the advanced package tool. So I'm going to go ahead and install LibreOffice. So what this tool is essentially doing is it's downloading the installer and it's going ahead and installing LibreOffice. So LibreOffice will now d display in Linux apps. And you've got the document, you've got the calc, you've got the impress, and you've got the draw. So these are equivalent to the, the most commonly used applications within Microsoft Office. And because this is docked just using a single standard resolution screen of 100% DPI, um, the display looks, looks pretty decent. It's only when I open up the laptop and use the laptop screen, which has a high DPI, that the display of the application begins to look a bit ropey. So I just went ahead and used um, apt install commands to install Flatpak and Flathub and now I'm just going to go ahead and restart both Linux and Chrome OS Flex itself. So after a restart, the only Office desktop editors appear to work. And as mentioned, they seem to take a while to load. So they're slow to start up. Once they start up, they're are okay to use. However, 
this takes a while to start. And also when you launch document or you launch one of the applications, it takes a while to initially load. So I just want to check that I've got the latest version as I did have this issue on Linux on an old version but it is the latest version so I don't think it's version specific I think it's just a bit slow running through Chrome OS Flex using a Debian based virtual machine and maybe that there's some other dependency which isn't quite, quite met within De Debian. So now that Flatpak and Flathub are installed, I can go ahead and install software this way. So I'm just going to install Genome Edit, which is the Linux-based text editor. And I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the Linux terminal. So let me activate the Spider Condo Forge environment and attempt to launch Spider again. And this time it seems to work. So I don't know if this is because I restarted or because I installed Flatpak, which may have installed some other dependencies. However, Spider does, does appear to work. And I'll just quickly input some test code. Okay, so the test code seems to work. I can change the spider preferences to use the light, light theme. And I can change the plot preferences to use automatic plots. And this will create a plot in a separate window and this works as expected. And just to finish up in the Flatpak store, I can go ahead and search for GIMP and go ahead and install GIMP. So this will give me an image manipulation program. And it displays under Linux apps. And launches as expected.